Good morning. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I am a featured attraction. <laughs> oh, Crystal Crawford. Actually, I think today the topic is my featured attraction. Um, I called today, hi Miss Jenny. I called today, um, who cares if you're a genius if your life looks like shit, right? Which is a little inflammatory and um, a little um, on the edge, but I did that on purpose. Hi, Karen. Hi, Bruna. Um, now, I'm going to be interested to see who joins me live today because I was a little bit like, when I made that banner and I called the show what it did, I was a little bit like, I wonder if people are going to show up for this. <laughs> but, um, hi, Stacey. Hey, 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 hey. So, anyway, um, so... Who cares if you're a genius if your life looks like shit, I call this show. And the reason I did it is I've got a telecall coming up called The Genius of Your Choices. And it used to be called Changing the Lives That You're Broken. You may have heard. <laughs> so when I renamed it, hi, Deanne. Hi, Madeline. Hi, guys. Um, hey, listen, if you all know that this is already going to be a wild ride and you want everybody else to have the same sort of abuse in their life, will you share this? <laughs> hi, Maxine. <laughs> So, so with this telecall coming up and me calling it the genius of your choices, my, the awareness that, you, you know, you always get awareness after you do things. After you choose things is when you get awareness. You don't get it before, you get it after. And so I called it this and I'm like, I don't think anybody actually cares about the genius of their choices. And I started kind of looking back in my timeline a little bit, like when I first started getting in touch with access consciousness tools, like, who cares if I'm a genius? Have you seen my life? Was really my point of view. And, um, you know, so we, in Access, when we're first, like, introducing these tools to everybody and you guys and all that, like, we talk about that question, like, what's right about me that I'm not getting? I hated that fucking question. <laughs> it's like, what's right about... And, and I would ask it, like, with a lot of judgment. I'd be like, what's right about me I'm not getting? Has anybody ever do that? Do you ever ask that with, like, a lot of judgment in your voice and energy of, like fuck, what's right about me that I'm not getting? Like, you've got more bills than money. What's right about me that I'm not getting, right? That's not actually the point of the question. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this today is that I think there's this point of view going on out there that used to be going on in here that the way to get to where I wanted to go was to look for everywhere I was wrong and try to fix it. And if I could find everywhere where I was wrong and try and fix it, then I could finally be right. That, you know, like, duh, hello, right? That's kind of what we're taught. It's like, you find the problem places, fix the problem. You know, if, you've, if a bridge has holes in it, you want to go fix the holes and like... But the thing about access consciousness and what I love and what I'm using more and more in my life is that I don't actually have problems. I have creations all over the place, right? Like I've created this here and I've created this here and I've created this here. And sometimes the this is a poo pile and sometimes the this is brilliant. <laughs> Well, it's always brilliant. It's just sometimes I have a brilliant poo pile, you know. And other times it's really fun, and other times it's really shitty, and, but all of it's creation. And again, with the, when I first heard that, that pissed me off, because I didn't actually really want to have full responsibility for everything I was creating. Hello, I wanted it to be somebody's fault and definitely not mine. <laughs> but none of that was conscious, right? That was just the way I was living my life. Well, everything in Access Consciousness is about inviting you to more awareness. More awareness of what's really true about you and more awareness of what you're truly creating. If you want it. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it. The thing about it is, if you really do choose it, you choose more awareness about what you're creating, that's that moment where you actually have another choice. So, you know, the genius of your choices. What does that mean? Why should you care? Why do I care? Why is that even a topic worth choosing? Right? Like if I'd called this like uh, activating your money genius, would that have been something like, oh yeah, I want that. I want to have that, right? Looking at the genius of your choices seems like, what is that? What good is that going to do me? And so I, I sort of wanted to talk about that a little bit, if I can. We'll see. <laughs> So this topic came out of the abuse class, actually, believe it or not. I, we did a three-day abuse class with Access Consciousness about, I don't know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And this whole awareness of what's actually brilliant about me that I really had never seen because I was so busy buying 
the lye lasagna on the top of that. And one of the things that I really got was brilliant about me that for a long time I thought was wrong was the way that I choose, the way that I move out of things and the way that I move into things and like this, this thing about choosing and moving. Um, recently in December, I made a choice to really leave a full-time, not even a part-time job, that was, but it was an integral part of my life. And I just chose to end it. And when I asked the question, what will my life be like in five years if I choose this to end it? It was very expansive. And if, what will my life be like in five years if I don't? It was not. And yet when I chose it, it was one of the, it was one of the hardest choices to really follow through on, like to really walk through and be with. And where it was hardest for me was to not judge myself for having chosen it and to not separate and to not judge anybody else and to not project and to not expect like to really choose to be present to be present and to keep showing up and to be present i practiced and worked on that muscle during that period of time harder than i've ever used it before and on top of that it has given me so much awareness of other things that i could not i could not have gotten any other way I never would have asked some of the questions that I started asking. I never would have started wondering about how great I really was or what it, what it would be like to receive the wonderfulness of me. Like there were so many things that I never would have asked or never would have looked for if I hadn't made that choice. Now that choice didn't seem related to those things, right? That choice seemed like it was, I had justification around that choice that looked like, well, I'm dissatisfied and it's not working for me and it's not fun. And so I chose. But truly, that was my justification. What the choice came out of was this awareness. And then I proceeded to like pad on the justification so that I could whatever I was doing with that, right? So this awareness that I had with what this choice was going to create, nobody could validate that for me. I couldn't talk to anybody else about that. When I did talk to a few people and they asked me some questions like, okay, true, well, you know, so choose, right? So I did. That is one simple example of a choice that didn't look like it was gonna, that looked weird. It didn't even look justified. I'm, the, the people I was working with are awesome people. The company, awesome company, the possibility, awesome, all this awesome. And I'm like, no, I'm aware of something and I have to choose something. Now, what was I aware of? I don't fucking know with my brains. Up here, like I couldn't have told you what I was aware of. I could have told you the justification for why I chose that. So what's come out of that has been all of this greatness and all of this wondering and all of this self choice and awareness and all that stuff. Hey, if you guys like this, will you share it so other people can join our party? Um, <laughs> I'm so weird. It's another thing that's right about me. So there was genius in that choice that I couldn't even let myself see because I was so busy justifying it. And one of the things that I wanna start inviting us out of and into, out of the lies that we're buying about what we're choosing or what we have chosen or the, our, the way our life has gone and into the awareness of what's really true about us. Now you may or may not wanna know that. I, uh, you know, I woke up last, yesterday morning, I may have even done a video, I don't know. I do so many videos. So I woke up yesterday morning and I basically didn't want to be on the planet anymore. And look, y'all, I use these tools often. When I wake up and I don't want to be on the planet anymore, I pretty much know that that shit ain't mine. But I was in it, you know, and I had reasons around it and I knew it. Like I was aware of the whole thing. And I'm in my body kind of watching this all go down and I'm having a good cry and I'm talking to John. And, um, and I start, asking a question, right? Thank you, Madeline. I started asking a question like, okay, so what is this? What can I do with it? Can I change it? How can I change it? And the very first thing I noticed is I didn't want to fucking change anything. I wanted to be right there and have a good cry. Guess what gift that was to me? That was the gift of allowance <laughs> to me. So I did. I had a good cry. Then I did a little funny little Facebook post that says, hey, when you wake up and you feel like you want to leave your life, you may want to ask if that's even mine. Just saying. That was fun. That apparently contributed to some people. Then I called a friend, I messaged a friend and I'm like, contributions, asking for contributions, please. Head is firmly up ass. I didn't ask them to ask me questions. I just asked for contributions. She sent me this one clearing. It started changing the energy. I did a couple of other Facebook lives, started changing the energy. Then I created something else, really changed the energy. <laughs> 
But that gift of actually allowing myself to be in a place where I didn't want to choose something else. I wanted to be right where I fucking was. But guess what? At that moment, in that particular choice, I wasn't resisting it anymore. I was just being there. And the genius of your choices, the genius of you, is that in every single moment, you have another choice. And so in the moment where you're resisting your choices, you have another choice. In the moment where you're not resisting your choices and you're just choosing, you have another choice. You always have another choice. And I was reading in Blessed Possibilities, uh, for, which is a transcript of a seven-day class with Gary and Dane, and, and the, one of the phrases in there has never left me. And he said, the phenomenance of you is your ability to choose. I used my ability to choose yesterday, and I chose to stay right in the middle of the poop pile. It was warm. I have, I have good stuff going on in there. <laughs> And then I just kept choosing and kept showing up for stuff and kept having conversations and just kept choosing and kept choosing. And guess what? In about four hours, it was different. And I had all this awareness, right? But the thing is, like, there is something, there is a you that very often we don't let ourselves have access to that knows, that just knows. You just know. You know what it's going to take to create your future. You know what it's going to take to create what you desire. You know the energy of the future you desire. You know all that stuff. Now, a lot of that stuff's gotten covered over. That's cool. You don't actually have to go looking for that. You can just start creating your life and you're gonna run smack into the things that you're being unconscious about because they're gonna show up in the shape of limitations. You know, these, these things that we're being unconscious about, these lies that we bought, they show up in certain shapes. Did you ever have one of those toys as a kid where you had that wooden box? Okay, I had this toy. There was a wooden box. <laughs> And on the top there was this hinged lid, and on the lid were these cutouts, right? Star shapes, square shapes, triangle shapes, right? And, I, and as a two-year-old kid, like you're trying to fit the star shape into the square shape forever, because certainly it must go in there. And if you are the smartest two-year-old on the planet, and you will figure out how to put this star shape into this square shape. And then, you know, you keep moving it around after a while because you figure out it doesn't go in there. And then you so it sort of slides over to the star shape and then plops right in, and you're like, and that's when you discover the star shape fits in the star shape. I think I missed my point. Damn, can we rewind this so I can go get it again? Oh, totally don't remember my point. All right, so that was a great toy. I learned a lot. <laughs> anyway, so we're living, we've, we've, so we've come into this world as little bundle baby unicorns. Dane just wrote a book about this, right? We come in, we're this bundle of possibility with four billion years of lifetimes <laughs> attached to us. And we enter this family, and in my case, my family was a shit show. <laughs> my dad and mom argued all the time. There was sexual abuse, verbal abuse, you know, judgment flying everywhere, projections, expectations, all kinds of shit, you know, until I was 13, and then we were in court, and then we had even more, oh, it was just on and on and on, endless abuse, abuses. Financial abuse, spiritual abuse, right? So we enter this whole, like, abuse gauntlet, and we pick, you know, you pick up a couple things. You, you kind of get, you know, brainwashed a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> and so by the time you get to being an adult and you're this, and you are innately this seeker, this someone who just knows there's something else. I just know there's something else. I just know there's more. I know there's more, I know there's more. And this shows up in all the ways, right? This shows up in blue hair and switching jobs and 15,000 times and, you know, having 10 careers and five husbands and, you know, 22 kids by seven different people. And, you know, it shows up in all the ways. And, uh, and, and, and for all of that, instead of asking, what's genius about me? We fuck ourselves over royally. We just make ourselves wrong. Why? Because this reality says that we are. So we just buy it. We're like, I must be, right? We don't have any other information. You don't come with a handbook slapped to your ass, you know, with a sticker that you can peel off that's got instructions in there. That would be so helpful, by the way. I'm looking into that. There's none of that. So by the time you get here and you're, you, find, you finally find Access Consciousness, and the people that I know that, that are in Access, that follow Access stuff, are like the people where we've been like, oh my God, finally somebody's saying the things I always knew but I didn't have language for, you know? So we get here and we start kind of diving into the tools and who does this belong to? An interesting point of view, I have this point of view. And, 
And how does it get better than this? That fucking tool drove me crazy in the beginning. Any tool, listen, here was my point of view. Any tool that took me out of the melancholy that was my best and only friend at the time was annoying to me. <laughs> <laughs> so even still today, I have these moments where I'm like, don't ask me how it gets better. <sighs> okay, now you can. Okay, what, uh, what's that question? How does it, you know? I still have those, because like, there's still part of that that I like a lot, you know? But the thing, <laughs> I think I have a point here. <laughs> so, so in the abuse class, one of the things we looked at, we, you know, we, we <laughs> so many things. You choose your family. You choose your family, right? Well, hand in hand with that, if you had abuse in your life, right, did we choose abuse? Like, that's where it starts to get a little fucked up for me. I, and I had that question leading up to the abuse class. I'm like, so I choose my family. Okay, does that mean I chose the abuse? That seems insane. <laughs> Guess what? That is insane. You didn't choose the abuse. You just happened to choose your family who had abusive assholes in it. They were dicks. They hurt you. And you picked up on all their stuff. This is a short form, guys. You bought a bunch of lies about you. You bought that you were wrong. You bought into distractor implants of shame and blame and regret and guilt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the points of view of your family. Like my family's point of view about money was there's never enough and there never will be enough. And it doesn't matter how hard we work, there will never be enough. That was what I grew up in. So for me as an adult, you know, looking at creating consciously or aware as I'm moving forward, I'm running smack into these lie walls, right? That I've made real and true and solid, more solid than my ability to choose. And in running into these lie walls, most of the time when I've run into them, at least in the past, I'd made myself wrong for having believed this and so wrong that I couldn't change it. And so really what we're taught to do is if you've run into a lie wall, like there's never enough money, you're taught to go find out where this came from, who it came from, what the problem is and try to solve this where really what you can do is just go around the fucking thing and actually your ability is your ability to choose around it. But we don't really practice this ability, right? We don't, it's not, there's not a lot of time spent practicing this ability and on top of that, usually by the time we found access consciousness tools, we've got a good 20 to 60 years <laughs> of not doing that or more, depending on who you are, right? So we got a lot of practice buying into lies. We do not have a lot of practice looking at what's genius about our choices. And so I've been really asking myself that question of like, what's genius about choosing my family that I have never looked at? And the more I ask that, the more I see, the more I can perceive. I mean, like, honestly, my mom gave us the best education. We didn't have Barbie dolls and G.I. Joe toys. We had educational toys. I have one of the best systems brains that I've ever seen, and it just moves fast. And she got us into like Suzuki piano lessons. So man, I could play the piano from memory just by listening to it. You're very welcome, Mr. Christian. Um, you know, and just, I could memorize sheets and sheets of music. I had a photographic memory. I had, you know, like just, I mean, literally the list goes on and on and on. I had straight A's through all of school until I got to public school, which didn't make any sense to me. It still doesn't make sense to me. It's because it doesn't make sense. This is also what's genius about you that you've never acknowledged is that the things that you know don't make sense actually don't make sense. You are correct. And here's the kicker for all of this. This is the wrap up to all of this. I don't know if I'm wrapping up the show, but definitely wrapping up the point. You cannot create your life, your money, your relationship from the place of judging you. It will not create from there because in that moment of judging you as wrong, you are decaying your future. You're decaying everything that you've created up to that point. Now, you don't have a lot of practice in the choosing beyond that. I'm not, I'm not making you wrong. I'm just saying that's what's going on. So the only place you can really create from true creation comes from that space of allowance. And allowance is where every single choice you've made is just a choice you've made. Right, like, and this is what I was looking at with, um, if you haven't watched my It's Not Personal video from uh, two weeks ago, check out my YouTube, It's Not Personal. That epiphany, that one lie that I bought, that abuse is personal, that people being mean to me is personal to me, that people being dicks is personal to me, that one lie created this whole entire way of creating my life. And 
And what I got was, I wanted to see how buying that was wrong or how somehow that made me wrong. And, and I just couldn't buy that. I, I actually couldn't really buy that. And, and the more it unraveled, the more I was like, holy fuck. That lie has been holding in place these ways of being in the world with people that have kept me alone and let's call it safe, um, protected. You know, that one lie has held in place all these ways of being in the world that I have really valued highly. And was it all based on lies? Yes. Can an infinite being truly require protection or be kept safe? No. Does an infinite being require protection? No. You're an infinite being. If you have infinite awareness, infinite, if all of that's true about you and you're using it, you are your own protection because you're always aware. You're not going to get yourself into fucked up situations because you just aren't going to choose that because you're aware of everything. But it's when we cut off our awareness that we get ourselves into these all these fucked up situations. And why do we do that? Because we do. One, we don't have new information. We don't know. This is what we've seen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? <laughs> Calm down. So... <laughs> So when I started to see that, like it's, it's not personal. That thing unraveling made me look at everywhere I was functioning from. Oh, yes, it is. It fucking is personal. I, it is like they, and I just started to see where I was actually fighting for the rightness of that point of view because it was valuable to me. And being able to see that was such a gift. And, and what I saw was genius about that was like multifold. Like there was so much genius about, I mean like the fact that I can hold a point of view in place for 40 plus years is amazing, by the way. I just wanna say that takes incredible strength, incredible strength. That doesn't mean it's bright, but it also like it says so much about me. And here's another thing that I'm looking at. And this is all kinds of stuff we're gonna go much deeper into in your life on the call, just so you know, is if you are capable of this facet of something, you got to look at what's the reverse of this, you know? So what's the reverse of being able to hold a point of view in place for years and years and years? Being able to change one on a dime. Am I also capable of that? Yes. Oh, so am I actually fucked up or do I just choose which one I choose because I choose it? Oh, so what does being able to do either one say about me? strong, flexible, bendable, mutable, changeable, etc., etc., etc. aware, like, I mean, really, when you start to actually break that down, it's kind of crazy what you're capable of. You're, so let's look at your financial situation. So you've created lots of past expenditures. Okay, what's the reverse of that? Creating lots of money or what I don't know out creating the past expenditures. So you ask yourself. So am I true? Am I capable of this? Yes. Am I capable of out creating it? Yes So what does that say about you? You're one capable motherfucker first of all you're creative you're resourceful and in a pinch you can do fucking anything You know, I mean like really so you start looking at these things and it's like wow there's so much more that you have available to you that's you than you've ever looked at or ever been willing to see. And that's what I want to invite us to because that's the place that you can start to create your life. Like really create. Allowance is the space. Allowance is this deep sense of knowing where everything's just an interesting point of view. Acknowledgement is this deep sense of knowing that you just is. You is. You is all the things. Sometimes you is crazy. Sometimes you is as genius as you really are in other ways that create. Sometimes you really genius at creating poop piles. Some, you just is. And you have these capacities for choices and creation that right now may be being used against you. Maybe not all of them, but some of them. That's okay. Let's look at them. Let's look at what's the flip side of those are. Let's look at what's actually true about you that you're not looking at. Because really and truly, once you start looking at what's really true about you, that's when you start to have access to you. That's when you get to start to trick yourself into more awareness of like, oh yeah, 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 I'm capable of that too. So that's when you get into the first chapter and the 10 keys to total freedom is like an infinite being wouldn't choose to outcreate this for what reason? Yep, I can't find one either. <laughs> which then empowers you. 
So that's really what I wanted you to look at today. It's like, what are you really, what are you committed to? Are you committed to empowering you? Or are you really committed to disempowering you at every turn you get? And listen, get kids, kids, I get it. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm so glad, Jennifer. Um, I get it. I get loving being disempowered, but at least admit that. Listen, the gift of consciousness is that consciousness includes everything and, and judges nothing. And I think probably my soapbox for the rest of my life is going to be at least be honest with yourself. Because then if you can be honest with yourself, first of all, you're going to make yourself laugh. I love disempowering myself. Try saying that and just see how it feels. I love empowering myself. Eh, not really. <laughs> it depends on the day. Because <laughs> what's that going to do? That's going to give you you. If you keep resisting and reacting to what you're choosing instead of just acknowledging what you're choosing, then it's going to take longer. Everything is going to take longer. Your whole life's going to take longer. By the time I'm 42, if I keep resisting and reacting, I'm going to be at least 73 before I... <laughs> yes, Cynthia, before I uh, get anywhere, you know, which is fine. I mean, that's 30 years from now, so that's a fine period of time for me to just sit... Fuck off! Like, <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that, right? Like, I don't have time for that. And, you know, this is going to show up so different for you than it does for me. But this is my basic point of view. Is like, I do not, ain't nobody got time to be disempowered. Please, least of all me. I have a different future to create, and I don't know exactly what it looks like, but I know I'm in the process of it. And I want access to me. Because, God damn it, if I can create a broke-ass family, a broke-ass self, two marriages, affairs, and... <laughs> three businesses and 10 jobs, what else am I capable of? You know, if I can create a facilitation and a coaching business online when I'm, apparently I wasn't supposed to be able to do it the way that I do it, what else am I capable of? If I can create magnificent debt, I mean, truly. Okay, it's not as magnificent as some people, but it's magnificent personal debt. What else am I capable of? And and it isn't just that question, it's like really getting into that question. Like, what are all the things that created this thing over here? And what are the flip sides of those? And am I capable of both? Do I have access to more than I even want to know? Am I ridiculously magical? And I don't, not magical. Because that implies to me, like, that you, I don't know, that's just my thing. You can use magical if you want. For me, it's capable. For me, it's that, like, I am stronger than I've wanted to acknowledge and more gentle and how I function for more kindness and more no judgment when I'm truly being me. And I have all these creative capacities that up till now I've been using to create a whole pile of hee-haw that I want. Because I got a future to generate, people. Like, you know, there's a planet out there. I'm sitting on it in a house. And people on that planet that I would like them to know that there's a different possibility in the world. You know? I'd like I'd like them to know that. And I happen to have a big mouth and a nice face, and so let's do it, you know? <laughs> Why not me? Let's do it. And so what do you want to create? And can you create it from the place of being disempowering to yourself? Or would it be a lot easier and even more fun? to create it from the place of being empowered with just being honest with yourself. And listen, it's being honest with yourself with all the things. And does that take balls? Fuck yeah, it takes balls. You probably don't have them, right? Like, you know, probably got little tiny balls, not like kangaroo balls that are just taped to the back right now. It takes balls, who cares? You got them. Listen, you got here. I'm sorry, but if you're watching me, you got balls. <laughs> you got balls. So how do you want to use them? How do you want to use them? What kind of courage do you have? What kind of awareness are you willing to now have about you and what you're truly capable of and what you can actually create and the gift you are, actually are to the world? Even in your insanity, you are still a gift. Listen, I'm insane a lot and apparently people get something out of my stuff. And I, yeah, there's insanity all the time. Biggest of all, biggest of all, yeah. All right, y'all. The beatings will continue until morale improves. I fucking adore you. If you loved this, please share it so other people can find it. And come join me on the call. 
If you're on my email list, you'll be getting an email today with another invitation. And if you're not, that's cool. Go to crystaljoycrawford.com and sign up for some free shit. Sign up for some paying shit. Sign up for some shit. All right. See you next week.